There's something going on at Chelsea. Currently, they've got the biggest squad size in the Premier League with a staggering 41 players, and they're still adding more. What the heck is going on at Chelsea? It all started back in 2022. During that period, Chelsea had been at their most successful under Roman Abramovich. Ever since the Russian billionaire took over the club in 2003, he turned them from mid-table success to one of the best teams in the country. Before Abramovich took over, Chelsea barely managed to qualify for the Champions League and hadn't won the competition. In the new Premier League system, they were decent but had very little to show for it. By the time Abramovich was approaching his 19th year as owner of the club, they'd won the Premier League, Champions League, Club World Cup, quite literally every European trophy on offer to win. They'd got in it. There was no trophy missing, man, but by 2022, Roman Abramovich and Chelsea were in trouble. A war was going on in Ukraine, and certain individuals like Roman Abramovich were being targeted for fraud cases. It became so heightened that the English authorities got involved, and once the investigation period became heavy, Abramovich's assets were targeted, which included Chelsea. And just like that, the link between the Russian billionaire and his English club was hanging in the balance. The English authorities had issued an ultimatum to Abramovich. It was either he cleared his name early or risked losing his foreign assets, which included Chelsea. Abramovich wanted to save the club and did everything he could to stay in charge, but in the end, the sanctions against him and his own country became too much. And in a sad turn of events, Abramovich was forced to sell the club. Meaning, for a couple of days that year, Chelsea was without a recognised owner. Abramovich meant the world to these guys, not just the club, but the fans too. He'd spent millions in making the team one of the best in the world. A year back in 2021, they just won the Champions League against the odds, beating Manchester City in the final. Now though, it was confirmed that Abramovich was leaving. The bid for Chelsea was officially on the market. Only thing is, this status didn't last long, because a few weeks in, a consortium led by two guys was ready to take over and become the new owners of the Blues. After weeks of speculation, Todd Bowley's led consortium had everything in place and was ready to take over Chelsea. The deal to acquire the Blues was in the region of $4.25 billion. After putting out a statement of intent showing what they wanted to achieve with the club and their ideas and goals, the fans and the rest of the world were all set for the show. Under Roman Abramovich, Chelsea had by far gotten the best years in the history of the club. The new owners had a standard they had to meet up to, and these guys began with a proper banger. By October 2023, they'd sacked the manager Thomas Tuchel. Now, when it comes to letting coaches go, this isn't a new thing as far as Chelsea is concerned. But with the new owners, it was a signal of things to come. Chelsea ended the 2022-23 season poorly. They were out of the European competitions and had gone through four different managers in one spell. They wanted stability. So they appointed former Spurs coach Mauricio Pochettino to take over as head coach and had one of the craziest transfer windows ever. By the time the August transfer window was closed, Chelsea looked like they had a spending addiction. They broke their club record to beat Liverpool to the signing of Moises Caicedo for $146 million. Still managed to acquire Romeo Lavia from Southampton for $58 million. Christopher Nkuku's agreement with the club months back became permanent for $53 million. Cole Palmer from Manchester City for $40 million. Robert Sanchez from Brighton. Nicholas Jackson. Axel de Sassi. Anyone watching the club knew what they wanted to do, but the way they were going about it just seemed off. The window had closed closed and unsurprisingly Chelsea was the club with the busiest schedule that period. They'd spent the most on players. See guys, Chelsea was trying to build a young squad, so they got rid of the older guys. Players like N'Golo Kante left. Same with Khalidou Koulibaly and Eduard Mendy. Cesar Aspilicueta, all these guys left, but it wasn't just the older guys. Young prospects like Mason Mount and Kai Havertz left. The two guys who combined to win Chelsea the Champions League in 2021. The club was really going through a rebuild and this was still only phase one. Todd Bowley's consortium was changing everything, even the backroom staff. Pete Cech and Marina Granovskia, two people who'd helped the club become successful in the years under Abramovich, were leaving.
leaving too. And there's something about Marina that's gonna come in handy later on in the video because she's the reason why Chelsea managed to get some of the previous transfers right, and also a reason why it all began to fall off later. Anyways, with these two gone, Todd Bowley became the main face of Chelsea's transfer policy, and to anyone watching, it was pretty obvious what they wanted to do. Sign as many young players as possible. The summer signings from August didn't exactly translate to immediate success on the pitch. For one thing, the squad full of new guys hadn't exactly gelled along, and for large parts of the new season, they looked disjointed and struggled to get anything going. So what did Todd Bowley do when January came along? He signed even more players. They went from getting established young talent to players with relatively low profiles. The system was confusing, but once again, Todd Bowley had a reason behind this. The first reason has to be the biggest one. Understand guys that the new owners, the Todd Bowley run consortium, they are Chelsea as a business. And what this means is that they'd always try to make as much profit from the club as possible. Chelsea now has scouting networks in different parts of the world. Take Brazil for instance. From the country alone, they've signed players like David Washington and Andre Santos. All these guys are talents who've been tipped for a lot of success in the future. And as was the case with players like Neymar and Robinho in the past, when they're usually ready enough to leave, they leave for huge sums. It's Bowley's strategy now to get them for now instead of later. The idea is to sign as many youngsters and either let the club train them or let them leave on loan till they mature enough to be ready for first team football. This happens and now Chelsea have a decision Either they're good enough to play for the first team, or they're good enough to play somewhere else and leave the club for at least the same value or way more than they were bought. It's a business model. It's messed up, but if it works, then it's added income for Chelsea and the owners. There's another reason why Chelsea can't stop signing players too, and this one is a plan to take over two countries. Well, here's the deal. The new owners also own close to 100% of Strasbourg, thanks to Blue Co, the club's main purchasing company. And so what happens next is Chelsea gets to send players they know have the potential to become good enough to go on loan here. And it seems like a good deal. They get to spend some of their talent to a league in the French League One, which is ranked as one of the top five leagues in the world. They experience the highs of playing first team football. And if they do well enough, can come back to the Blues and play for the senior team. There's another reason why the Blues can't stop signing young players. And now this one is to avoid what's coming in the future. For years, Chelsea has played with potential bands from signing players. They've never really been caught with this until the 2019-20 season, the first time the club got slammed with a complete transfer ban that meant they couldn't sign anyone. During the Roman Abramovich case, the club's assets got frozen, which meant nothing could really come in or go out. This included transfers too. Luckily, the case got resolved, but with the way they've been moving lately, there's every possibility that this could happen again. Chelsea might get slammed with transfer ban in the future, and when this happens, they want to have enough players in multiple positions who can cover and make sure they don't feel the effects of a ban, no matter how long. The idea makes sense, I mean if this does happen, with a squad size of 41 players, the largest in the league, I'm pretty sure they'd be able to cover up and handle any problems that come with a potential ban. But now we know the reasons guys, it's time to be practical. They're going about this the wrong way and it feels like a disaster waiting to happen. The idea of getting young talent across the world isn't new to Chelsea. Back in the early 2010s, they were doing it a lot. Back then, as soon as they realized an emerging talent had subscribed to Mr. Football, that was the trigger. They'd go all out to sign the player and make him join the club. However, not all these players signed under the system made it at the club. Players like Mohamed Salah, Kevin De Bruyne, or even Romelu Lukaku, for instance. De Bruyne was signed from Hienk in 2011 as one of the most promising talents out of Belgium, but he didn't get opportunities at the club. Jose Mourinho didn't like him that much and allowed him to get sold to Wolfsburg in 2014. Ten years later, and it's safe to say De Bruyne has become a star, but not at Chelsea. Mohamed Salah. They copped him from Basel after he was lighting up the Swiss top flight week in and week out. But what followed next was a series of bench appearances because he didn't fit under Mourinho's policy. Salah eventually left Chelsea to play for Fiorentina, and Roma on loan, before he made a permanent move to Roma, came back to the Premier League to join Liverpool in 2017. Now he's the highest scoring African for the club in the league. By the club, I mean Liverpool. And oh yeah, he's dunked on Chelsea in the past too. Ouch. With Lukaku, it gets even worse. Chelsea sold the guy after it became clear he wasn't going to play under any of the managers at the club. He impressed at West Brom, made it big at Everton, went to Manchester United, then into Milan in Serie A, and in the summer of 2021, 
Chelsea splashed over $105 million to get him back to the club. There's no fairy tale ending to this story. Lukaku's currently waiting for a domino effect move to take place so he can reportedly join Napoli. Damn. You're probably thinking, if this has happened before, why are they still signing players using this system? Well, even though they're going about it the wrong way, the idea is still a good one. Now, under Roman Abramovich, what Chelsea did during the successful years was to sign some of the best talent in the world in their somewhat prime years. Think of guys like Didier Drogba. He was 27 when he joined Chelsea. And even though he wasn't an established name in the game, he'd physically reached a level where he wasn't a kid football-wise and was ready to mix it up in a physically demanding league. Over the years, this became the case. Anytime Chelsea splashed, it was on big talent. Fernando Torres joined the club in the winter window of 2011 at 29, when Claude Makélélé joined the club from Real Madrid. He was already 30, in the prime of his career. Signing players like this meant while Chelsea was guaranteed to get a crop of players who in their prime would give the club the best years of their careers, once they were past that prime, it usually meant that to maintain or manage that same level of success, they'd have to repeat the trick by signing the same level of players. The thing is, the process also wasn't cheap. Wasn't cheap back then and with the way the football market is now, it certainly isn't going to become less expensive anytime soon. The alternative to beating this is what Chelsea and Todd Bowley think they're doing, and that's by developing their own talent. Think of some of the best clubs in the world who specialise in this method. Clubs like Borussia Dortmund, Benfica, Ajax and even Barcelona back in the day. These are clubs that focused on developing their talent in their respective academies and either making them good enough for first team football or selling them to even bigger clubs for huge fees. Seems Chelsea are trying to be that club now, but the truth is, the model they're using is just messed up. The most successful clubs in the world have a structure that they stick to no matter what. Think of Real Madrid, for instance. They've never changed transfer policies. It's been the Galacticos all through. Gives the fans and players an idea of what to expect when the club goes into the market for players. Can't quite say the same about Chelsea. This summer hasn't been any different. They've continued with the same strategy. New signings like William Esteval, Kendry Paez, Mark Gouy, Omari Kellerman, Samu Omorodian. Caleb Wiley, Philip Jorgensen, all new signings added to the squad. It's clear the idea isn't to strengthen here, they're just adding as many numbers as they can. Truth is guys, it probably doesn't become as big a problem if Chelsea were winning on the pitch. But for the individual brilliance of Cole Palmer, take out his goals and assists, all of that match winning stuff, they could have been fighting among the relegation places last season. The transfers have made this current Chelsea team disjointed. At times it's like they don't know each other or haven't trained before, and that's the problem. The players coming in haven't exactly trained with the rest of the group long enough to build a team or any structure that can help them challenge for anything. According to the reports, Todd Bowley is all set to step down from the transfer department at the club in 2025. And what this means is that it opens the door for Chelsea to get someone like Marina Granovskia. Yeah, the woman I mentioned earlier. She was the glue behind some of the club's most successful transfers of the last decade. Getting someone who knows the game or knows how football transfers work would be a plus for the team. It'll mean they'd have a pattern or structure, the type of players they're looking for in the market because now it looks like I could slap on YouTube compilations of a kid down my alleyway and get Chelsea to sign him as a next generation talent. There are signs to show some of the talents they've signed are talented. Players like Cole Palmer, obviously, Nonso Madueke, Enzo Fernandez, and Moises Caicedo, all are players who are talented but need a couple of years at the very least before they can get to that super superstar level they're tipped to reach. The problem is, Chelsea has always been a results-based club. It seems like they were working something with Mauricio Pochettino after finishing 7th last season. Chelsea let him go and replaced him with Leicester City's title-winning coach, Enzo Maresca. The instability at the club from the top down to the squad makes the environment a difficult one for these players to develop. It's almost as if they're expected to see a new manager at the dugout every 6 months. If they can get their act right, get a sporting director or someone directly in charge of transfers, stop signing just anyone and develop a proper plan to approach the market, Chelsea might become that club again. First though, they've got to make the players they have to translate the signings to performances on the pitch. They didn't look all that convincing in pre-season. A 3-0 win over Club America got overshadowed with a draw to Celtic and a defeat to Manchester City. Still, it was a good opportunity for new coach Mar
Goreska to assess his current squad. And I'm sure he, just like everyone else watching, would admit there's quality in the team. Players like Christopher Nkuku and Nonso Madueke look sharp. New signing Mark Gui got off the mark, but that's pre-season. The league starts in less than 10 days. It'll be very interesting to watch Chelsea this season. See if they decide to stick with what they've got or go into the market looking for new players to sign again. You know, watching Chelsea sometimes makes me wonder what would happen if they had an owner like Florentino Perez. Imagine the Spaniard running the affairs at Chelsea. Could have been different. What if I told you Perez is the reason why Madrid has become the best team in Europe and the world? And he getting to the top was all because of a mistake and fake promise no one saw coming. You can find out how in the next video. Click it to watch the epic legacy of Florentino Perez.